way past sunup and you're still lounging around. What are you waiting on? I'm waiting on you to climb out of bed. Out a little late last night, weren't you, Nick? Yeah, a little. What's this we have here? The bandits massacred or the citizens strike back. Another thrilling true life story by Ted Haggard. Now, where did you get this? Dave Carr. Interesting book. You ought to read it. I already have. So have I. You, Audra. When did you start reading dime novels? Well, I borrowed it from Edith, but it really belongs to her brother. What's it about? Well, it's supposed to be the true story of the Devlin gang and what happened to them two years ago in Kansas. But as I recall, they robbed a bank and were all gunned down, weren't they? Except for the girl. What girl? Well, that's the girl that uh, Halyard invented for this true life story. Well, see, there was this skinny red-headed kid that was waiting outside with the horses, and he got away because he outrode the posse. Well, now, Halyard says that this skinny red-headed kid actually was Devlin's woman dressed in pants, and he also claims that she's hiding out somewhere right here in California. Waiting for the chance to sneak back and dig up Ike Devlin's buried treasure. It is exciting, isn't it? Oh, almost as exciting as those stories you used to write about that great Western hero and cavalry scout, the Comanche Kid. You remember the real Comanche Kid, don't you? Mm -hmm. Very well. He was the biggest liar in the territory, and all his scouting was done in saloons. Halyard has a very vivid imagination. And we have an awful lot of work to do, and I haven't got time to wait all day for you. Come on. Morning, Dave. Morning, Dave. Morning, Dave. Morning, Dave. Morning, Dave. Well, uh, thanks for the book. Hey. It's pretty interesting, huh? Got it all in one night. Oh, by the way, where's Jody? Well, he should be along about now. Oh? I can't say as I've seen him since sundown yesterday. Where'd he go? Snipe hunting. <laughs> Snipe hunting? Oh, come on, Dave. Even old Jody wouldn't fall for no stunt like that. I don't know. Look at that. I got another one we could play on him. Oh? This thing about Ike Devlin's woman hiding out around here. What about it? I'll bet you we could name most any girl in town, and Jody believes that she's the one. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think so. I got a silver dollar that says that we could even say it was Jenny Hall, and he'd believe she's the one. <laughs> Jenny? Jenny Hall? You, you mean the dressmaker? Well, she's a redhead, <laughs> just like in the story. <laughs> you got yourself a bet. Oh. How'd you do? I almost caught me a pass of them little devils. Oh, yeah? <laughs> but, but they got away. Oh. Well, I told you, they were shifty. Oh, they are. <laughs> but I'll catch them next time there's a full moon. I bet you will. Well, now, I think you better hitch up the wagon and go into town for some supplies. Hey, Pretty hold good. on. Aren't you going to warn him about Miss Jenny Hall first? Oh, that's right. Uh, Jody, uh... I'm gonna let you in on a big, deep secret. I want you to keep it quiet, here. Good morning, Mr. Edwards. I want to congratulate you on winning that calf roping contest. Oh, yeah? Thank you. You were really outstanding. I said to myself, I must tell him. Excuse me. Laverne?
tell you something, Audra. There isn't any law against what you've got in mind. But I have a feeling there ought to be. Nonsense. I've invited a few nice people to our house for dinner and an auction, that's all. Nice people? Don't you mean rich people who are going to be just a little bit poorer before they escape your dainty little clutches? You're making it sound like armed robbery. They'll have a good time and they'll be helping a lot of orphans. What's the matter with that? Absolutely nothing. So what next, slave driver? Go get another case? Please. Uh. Well, just in time. What is all this junk? Never mind. Follow me. Junk? These are antiques for our auction. We're having an auction. During the party. Well, I didn't even know we're having a party. That's because you never listened to me. We're raising money for the orphanage. You can put me down for $50. You're good for $150. What was that? I said you're good for $150 at least. Audrey, you're absolutely right. I never listen. Mother! Oh. Well, Mother, I am starving. I want to start off with a side of beef, two gallons of coffee, and I'm going to settle down to some serious eating. You <laughs> were not expected for lunch. Change my mind. He's still in town? He's back. As a matter of fact, he's out looking for you. Oh? What about? Well, he brought back some disturbing news, and for some strange reason, he thought you would be interested in hearing it, too. What? Do you know Miss Jenny Hall? Uh, no, no, no. The, the no. new dressmaker. I'm sure you Oh, Jenny Hall, yeah. yeah. Well, he says it's a ridiculous story all over town. Remember Halyard's book, the one we were talking about a few mornings ago at Devlin breakfast? Gang. Uh-huh. Well, some fool started a story about Jenny. They say she's the missing bandit. There's a couple of things that uh, I've got to get done. Uh, got, what about your lunch? I'm not very hungry. I'll, I'll see you later. Oh! the white and two of the blue. Oh, and that uh, piece of lavender brocade I looked at the other day. And a roll of that pale blue ribbon. How much will that be? I'll, uh, I'll charge it to your account. Um, Mr. Simmons, I don't have an account with you. Well, you, uh, you have one now. What in the world is going on? Has this entire town lost its mind? Uh, Miss Hall, I think maybe I can explain. If we could go somewhere and talk in private. In private? Uh, my name is Nick Barclay, and, well, I just... I know who you are, Mr. Barclay. I didn't think you'd know who I am, though. Oh, I do, I do, and I, I like uh, very much to... Well, my shop is at the end of the street. We can go there. Fine, fine. Yeah, but, but, but Mr. Simmons... I'll charge it, Miss Hall. I'll charge it. Barkley, you figured on sniffing after from here to Kansas? Uh, hold this, I'll be back in a minute. Take your best shot. I didn't 
didn't catch the name of the gentleman who just left. That was Mr. Nick Barkley. Formidable fellow. And the lady he's escorting is... Uh, Miss Jenny Hall. Better and better. Well, gentlemen, your next drink will be purchased by our country's most successful author and utterly fearless newspaper correspondent. You, sir? Ted Halyard, Esquire. The drinks are on Mr. Halyard. Go on to the You wouldn't like a cup of tea. What? Oh, oh, oh no, no. Uh, thank you very much. Won't you sit down, Mr. Barkley? Ah, this gown is for your sister Audra. Pretty, isn't it? Yes, very pretty. I believe she's having a dinner party next week. Some other ladies have ordered dresses just for it. What are you having so much trouble saying, Mr. Barclay? Look, uh, it's all my fault. Do you understand? No, I can't really say that I do. Won't you sit down, Mr. Barclay? I mean, this whole thing, and this this whole thing is going on in town. The the the, the people staring at you and the, everything. Well, it's my fault. It is. Yes. Uh, did you did you ever read the Halyard story about the about that missing bandit and how uh? He, uh, how he says it was a woman? The Devlin gang. Right, right. Well, this whole town seems to think it's you. I see. And why should they think that, Mr. Barkley? Because Jody's got a big mouth, that's why. Jody? Yeah, Jody. Yeah, he's a, he's a hand. He, he works for me. Well, he's a little bit short of brains, I tell you. I mean... You can tell him anything, he'll believe it. I mean, if, if, you were to if you were to tell him that... Well, no matter what you tell him, he'd still believe it. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd try to prove that, well, Jody isn't as stupid as everybody thinks. And, uh, I mean, there, but there were some things that even Jody wouldn't believe. So I told him that... I told him that you were the missing member of the Devlin gang. But why me, Mr. Barkley? Because you're the least likely woman I could think of. And because I'm just about as short of brains as Jody is, that's why. I figured you'd come at me with those scissors there. <laughs> no, these, these are just pinking shears. <laughs> they just keep you from coming unraveled. <laughs> <laughs> to brighten my very dull life, Mr. Barclay. I can't remember the last time I laughed this much. Would you call me Nick? I'd appreciate it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Nick, with all this, will you tell me why I haven't had a visit from the sheriff? Well, I guess that it's... Uh, he's got twice the sense I have. Oh, but I'll... Uh... I'll go right over to his office and straighten all this out as soon as I leave here. Now, Miss Hall. Oh, just Jenny will be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Jenny. Are any of these, uh, fancy dresses around here yours? Mine? Oh, no. <laughs> Why not? Oh, where would I wear them? To a party. My sister Audra's throwing a party at our house. Oh, Mr. Barclay. Nick. You don't have to do penance for your sins. I absolve you. Turning me down, right? Yes. There must be dozens of suitable ladies for you to invite. Oh, no, I can't think of a one. 
Pick you up 7 o'clock Friday night. Oh, but I... 7 o'clock Friday night, you be ready, hear? Bye-bye. Let me introduce myself. Ted Hallier. The writer. The same. Didn't know you were in Stockton. Mr. Barkley, while I was up in Sacramento, I heard a very interesting rumor. Oh? Which I felt deserved my personal attention. I see. Uh, how well do you know Miss Hall? Oh, no, no, wait a minute. You're not thinking of doing a story about her, are you? Well, now, she's the one that rode with the Devlin gang. She never rode with Still, them. Mr. Barkley, if she is the one, I feel that I owe it to my public. Mr. Hallier. Never rode with the Devlin gang. Let's get that straight. How can you be so sure? I'm sure. I see. You've appointed yourself the girl's protector. That's right. Praiseworthy. Let me spell it out for you, Mr. Halliard. You stay away from Miss Hall. She never rode with the Devlin gang. It was all a very bad joke. I see. Still, it would make a very interesting uh, follow-up story. Properly handled, of course. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Oh. I might incur your displeasure. You might. <laughs> well, in that case, Mr. Barclay, having been a witness to the last time your displeasure was incurred, I shall, of course, abandon the entire project. Permanently. I swear it, Mr. Barclay, on the grave of my sainted mother. The late ball? You're on. I'll break. Uh -huh. I got the solids. Say, listen, I didn't know you knew Ted Halliard. We've met. That's all? Sounded more to me like you were old pals. How do you mean? You sure didn't leave me much of a shot. What about Halliard? Well, nothing, only I was introduced to him in town today. And he insisted that I bring you a message about his mother. His mother? Yeah. He wanted me to tell you that his mother is the oldest living female pharaoh dealer in Boulder City, Colorado. Now, what, uh... What else did he say? Oh, nothing, only he suggested that I read his story in the Morning Eagle. I got it right over there. What's it say? Nick, old boy, I think you're gonna have time to read it yourself. Tell me about it, will you? Well, he suggests, uh, without actually naming names, that he knows the identity of the missing member of the Devlin gang. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's just another classic example of yellow journalism. At its lowest, I might add. Or gossip being dignified in print. Respectable young lady being pilloried by innuendo. Jared, you're not talking to a jury. It's me, Nick. Well, I wish I were talking to a jury. But I have a feeling that our little dressmaker friend is in a lot of trouble. Well, if she is, so is Halia. Huh? Now. Oh, 
Good evening. Good evening. Well, you look great. Oh, do I really look all right? Yes, you, you, you just look great. Oh, thank you. Which is no more than I expected. Oh, <laughs> if anyone ever tells you that you're an expert liar, don't believe him. All ready? Mm. young lady. Oh, if only I were 60 again. Why, Senator, <laughs> you're the youngest man I know. And how much will that nice compliment cost me? Not, mind you, that it won't be worth every penny of it. Those words came straight from my heart. <laughs> and you'll find the blank checks over there on the table. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Miss Audra. But, uh, what for? Oh, I hear that your mines are producing more silver than any other mines in the West. They're a very efficiently run operation. So giving up a day's profits just one day wouldn't hurt too much, would it? I beg your pardon? Well, I was thinking of how much the orphanage could do with that money. Well, it's a very worthy cause, but... Uh... Oh, dear Mr. Patton, thank you. I knew we could count on your generosity. The blank checks are over there. Audra, shouldn't you be wearing a mask and carrying a gun? Too obvious. When do you want me to get this little auction started? When I tell you to. Jenny. Oh, Jenny, how nice to see you. Thank you, Mrs. Bach. Come and meet some of our friends. Jenny Hall, how come? Why not? Jenny, may I present Senator Roberts and Mr. Frank Patton, Miss Jenny Hall. How do you do? Our pleasure. Are you Miss Hall, the young lady who recently came to the... Our dressmaker. She made the beautiful gown your wife is wearing tonight. Oh, Nick. Excuse me. And Jenny? Thank you. I have a uh, feeling we've met before. Really? A few years ago. Were you a banker in Kansas? No. Then it couldn't have been when I was riding with the Devlin gang. <laughs> Miss Hall, I certainly didn't mean to imply anything. Of course you didn't. Seeing you here tonight is enough to make anyone realize what a ridiculous story that was. Halyard is a scoundrel. And a poorly informed one. For example, he never mentions the fact that the missing bandit appeared to be left-handed. Was he? How do you know that? I've been doing quite a bit of reading on the subject recently. Uh, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. I, as you may have noticed, am not left-handed. <laughs> well, I never noticed that. Oh, well, perhaps that's because I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> I do things equally well with either hand. <laughs> <laughs> By George, Miss Hall, you're a cool one. I'm really beginning to believe that you're the bandit after all. <laughs> or that she's trying to make us suspect her of being one. Well, now, I'm sure you wouldn't be interested in just a humdrum dressmaker. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gather around and 
bear in mind, as you do, that it's always very pleasant to acquire great pieces of art at a fraction of their original value. And it's even more gratifying when you remember that your dollars are going to those who really need them most. Now, what am I offered for this authentic Ming Dynasty vase? <laughs> off this last item, I want to thank you for your patience and extreme generosity. Which brings us, gentlemen, to this handsome set of dueling pistols. Beautiful. Once the property of President Andrew Jackson. What am I bid? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. I have fifty dollars. Do I hear seventy-five? Seventy-five? Seventy-five. Do I hear one hundred, gentlemen? One hundred dollars. One hundred. One hundred dollars. A hundred and fifty. Is there a man here generous enough to give us one hundred? Is something wrong? Miss Hall, your place was ransacked tonight. My deputy surprised whoever did it, and he's dead. No, oh, no. How awful. <laughs> Come on, sit down. Victoria. Miss Hall, I've got to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. No, of course not. She knows nothing about this, Fred. I'm responsible. I told you about it the other day. Now, take it easy, Nick. Have you any idea who could have done this thing? I'm sorry. Looked like the work of more than one man. Uh, do you know what they were after? No. I have nothing of any great value. Miss Hall, why did you come to Stockton? Well, I, I, I'd heard that the town was growing and that it needed another dressmaker. I see. Miss Hall, where were you in mid-July two years ago? Wait a minute, Fred. You don't have to answer that, Jenny. Oh, I, I don't mind. I, uh... I believe I was in San Francisco. Do you think you could get anybody to back that up? I doubt it. Must I? Oh, Fred, I couldn't tell you where I was two years ago in mid-July. But I certainly wasn't in Kansas robbing banks, and neither was Miss Jenny. I didn't say she was, but one thought occurs to me. I've got a hunch those men tonight would be harder to convince than Nick and me. And they could come back. Well, then Jenny will stay with us for a while. Oh, that's kind of you, but uh, I couldn't stay here indefinitely. I I've got work now, to you do. You listen to what she says, young lady. You'll make my job a lot easier. Come along. But... She'll be all right here. Yeah, she'll get plenty of protection, but... But what? She's never going to be entirely safe until that rumor's killed. The trouble with rumors is that they grow no matter what. Yeah. We got to keep moving, Link. There's bound to be a posse after us. Link, are you listening? I'm trying not to. The deputy's dead. It'd be different if you hadn't killed him. You figure we should have gone along peaceable to the jailhouse? Beats dancing from the end of a rope. I say we ought to move on. Why? Why? That's right, why? The only man who could identify us is dead. Sheriff don't know who to look for, let alone where. Yeah, what Link says makes sense. So we're lucky. Let's not push our luck. We gotta get out of here and just keep going till we get to Nevada. And what do we got there? Jobs, maybe. <laughs> Jobs. Breaking our backs for six bits a day. If we find Devlin's pile, we're rich. Devlin's pile could be anywhere. Who knows where it is? Hey. What do you think? The dressmaker. 
I figure she knows where it is, all right. We didn't find nothing in her shack. Mm hmm Because she's smart. Well, it could be that uh, she don't know nothing about it. Could be that she's just a dressmaker. You saw the gun she had in there? Yeah. Cannon. Could blow a hole in you as big as my fist. It's mighty strange, isn't it? And I know for a fact that Devlin used to leave his loot with his gal friends. <laughs> the wind. It's got him spooked a little bit. Oh. You can put that gun away. Stop running. Law's gonna be on the lookout for someone on a run. Why don't we go back to Stockton and check into the hotel? You know, that's the first thing that you've said that was halfway smart. <laughs> I was joshing. Well, I'm not. The woman's in Stockton, that's where I want to be. You mean the, the three of us just ride back into town, bold as brass? Mm hmm. If you got enough nerve. I ride with you, Link. Do you mean? shooting somebody? Not before breakfast. You look like quite the expert with that gun. Thanks. But don't tell anyone, will you? I'm in enough trouble. All right. But I might also mention that you look like you were born in those ranch clothes. Audra lent them to me. Well, they look good on you. Oh, I have to go into town to take care of a few things, but I'll be back later this afternoon. Meanwhile, you want anything, you just holler. I'd like to go home, Nick. What's the matter? Aren't we treating you right? Oh, you've been wonderful. All of you. But I've got work to do. It'll keep. You stay put. But I... Talk about it later this afternoon, when I get back. Meantime, have fun. Mr. Barkley, this is indeed a pleasure. I detest eating alone. Would you care to join me? I'd sooner eat with a polecat. <laughs> Mr. Barkley, I did practice a mild deception on you. I admit that. You lied. Well, Mr. Barkley, the freedom of the press, you know. I have an obligation to print the news. To print the truth. Oh, no. If it's an apology you're after, I'd be most happy to print a retraction. I swear it. You, know, you swear on the grave of your sainted mother. Sheriff, this man has just assaulted me. I demand protection. You better get out of here. I, I beg your pardon? Leave town. I didn't see him assault you, but I may not be around when he tries it again, either. Oh. I see. Now, if 
you'll excuse me. I don't think I'd like to know what you were doing to him, but I figure maybe it was good for his soul. Amen, Fred. Come on, let's have a beer. Yeah. What? Uh, but I would like to talk to you. All right. All right, one beer, huh? I think I was just coming out to your place. I've been doing some thinking about Dave Carr. Dave Carr? What about him? Yeah, well, he was the first one who brought Jenny Hall's name into this thing, wasn't he? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, how come? What? How come? Why her? Why not somebody else? Well, well she seemed like the least likely person to be running with an outlaw gang, is all. Well, maybe I can tell you something you don't know. I hear your friend Jenny is a dead shot. Who says so? Luke Jenkins. He saw her practicing. Luke Jenkins? Oh, Fred. He's so drunk most of the time that it, he's lucky he can see the nearest saloon. All right, that could be. But uh, Luke said he saw a woman down by the river firing at a target last week. And uh, Luke says it was Jenny, huh? Well, he didn't get a good look at her. She took off before he could... See her up close, but he did see the target. He said he could cover the holes in it with the palm of his hand. Well, now, that doesn't prove a thing, Fred. Could have just been a woman alone, practicing self-protection, and she got very lucky. Yeah. Yeah, Dave Carr could have brought up her name for no very good reason, but uh, I'd still like to talk to him. Well, he's, he's out with the herd. All right, when he gets back. All right. Looks like he had to. Without a salary? It doesn't make much sense, does it? Well, it doesn't. When was the last time anyone saw him? Well, this afternoon before Chow. He was at the back of the herd. First, they figured he was out chasing strays, but there weren't any strays. Maybe he got tired of biting the dust back there. Where'd they all chow down? I just the other side of Dry Goats. Feel like taking a ride with me? No, uh, but I will. Well, thank you. Him up a little bit, too. Hey, his horse is gone. Oh, no, it isn't the horse. I got a feeling it's the Devlin's gold. What would Carr know about it? Well, he's the one that brought Jenny's name up, remember? Were you trying to say Jenny really had something to do with the Devlin gang? I'm not sure anymore. Heath, you ever heard of a seamstress as a dead shot with a rifle? No. Jenny is. Well, what does that prove? Now, you think about it. We're the ones that said it was ridiculous that she could never be a part of the Devlin gang. But I never heard her say it. I mean, loud and clear. Now, what do we know about her background? About as much as we know about Dave Carr's here, which is absolutely nothing. You, uh, fetch the sheriff, will you, Heath? Where are you going? I'm going to talk to Miss Jenny Hall right now. <laughs> Like 
like that. Where's Jenny? She's gone. Gone? Gone where? To town. Well, why didn't you stop her? How could I have stopped her? Besides, I didn't even know she'd left till Silas told me. said you were pretty much of a dead shot. Seems to me you're a pretty good horsebacker, too. Oh, I see. Oh, you do, huh? <laughs> You've begun to believe your own joke. Is it a joke? Where were you going? To town. Because I'm just a dressmaker, no matter what you think. And I was beginning to feel like a prisoner. All right, Miss Dressmaker, you better hear this. Dave Carr is dead back there. Somebody must have figured he knew something. Couldn't have. There was nothing for him to know. Nothing? Nothing. It's still my fault. All I had to do was tell the truth. What is the truth? Two years ago, in mid-July, I was at Fort Laramie in Wyoming. Well, now, why didn't you tell that to me or the sheriff? I don't know. I've been so unhappy, so ignored. I felt like a stranger everywhere. You changed all that by accident. Suddenly, people paid me attention. And it didn't matter why. I guess I've been using you ever since. Who are you, Jenny? My real name's Hollister. My father was commandant at Laramie where I learned how to ride and shoot. And make dresses? No. I learned that after I ran away. What'd you run away for? Well, there was this sergeant at the post. I was foolish enough to believe that he loved me. Turned out that all he really wanted was the Commandant's daughter. My father died, and my sergeant all but deserted rather than marry plain Jenny Hollister. Well, I just couldn't face people after that, so I, I left home and came to... Who are they? I don't know. Come on. One of them's riding Dave Carr's horse. What? Yeah, that rock. Howdy! Is this the uh, Barkley Ranch? That's right. Good. My uh, partners and me, we found this horse. Thought it might belong to you. Stay right where you are. Oh, well, that's not very friendly. I wouldn't try that. You'll never make it. There are three of us, Barkley. Try it, and there'll only be two of you. All we want is the girl. Send her down, and we'll ride on. You're wasting your time. That girl knows nothing. Well, then there's no harm in my talking to her, is there? Now, the next one is going to be right between the eyes. Back off. Back off. Nice and slow. Yeah. 
around here. You forget it. See you running away from anyone or anything. I ran. I've been running ever since. How's it coming? <laughs> That's the first time I ever shot at a man. And the last time. You could have been killed. Now, come on, get back. I wouldn't want to be alive if they get us. be welcome in our home and in Stockton. I should say the population of Stockton should double in the next few years. Could make you a very wealthy woman. Oh, thanks. But I belong in Laramie. If I stayed here, I'd still be running away from myself. I'm through with that. I'm not Jenny Hall, and I'm not an outlaw girl. The pretending's over. I'm just Jenny Hollister, good or bad. Well, that's plenty good enough. Will you write to us, Jenny Hollister? Of course I will, Mrs. Barkley. Let's go. Howdy. I was wondering if I could hitch right into town with you. And... Well, I'll tell you, Jody. I heard tell that uh, Miss Hall here has a gun concealed in that sling of hers. Oh, you're just funning me. <laughs> Get in the back, Jody. Here. Here. 